can we do about that, especially on the doorstep and constitutional reform? Um, okay, so on the issue of approval ratings, I think you have to take polls seriously, but also treat with a degree of scepticism because campaigns matter and good campaigns matter. Uh, that doesn't mean that we should be complacent. I think that the most uh, corrosive uh, character trait within the Labour Party at the moment is a culture of fudge. And in an effort to do something which I think we all agree with, which is balance wildly differing points of view and try and approach something that looks a bit like consensus, often what you end up with is something which is neither really one thing nor another. There are these loopholes, there are these spaces for interpretation. You then have you know, senior Labour politicians going off freelancing and the message is incredibly muddled. And you know, I heard John speak very, very inspiringly about the Green New Deal. This is still obviously in the process of compositing that sort of lawless, everyone gets locked in a room and there's gouging of the underbellies until a motion uh, you know, um, comes about. But what happens also through some of those processes is, isn't necessarily that you end up with a consensus, it's that you end up with a watering down of what was a very clear proposal. And the Brexit party doesn't find itself hamstrung by unclear proposals. They just say, no deal, fuck it, and by the way, get rid of brown people. Same with the Leave campaign, same with you know, even the Conservative parties now, now under Boris Johnson. And so I think that what the Labour Party really needs to get a grip on is balancing the need for consensus, which I do agree is, is really important, having democratic processes and hashing things out, and also coming out with something which you can say that people will remember and that also, more importantly, activists believe in, and that the public believes in. On this matter of constitutional reform, I'm going to be really, really quick, <coughs> is, um, you know, t Tony Blair was an idiot. And one of the reasons why he was an idiot is that he, pr he approached constitutional reform this completely p piecemeal way. And so he didn't think about the effects of having a of having, uh, proportional representation in one form of election when you've still got first past the post in another. The process of devolution meant that, uh, you know, you did have some degree of autonomy for uh, Scotland. Um, obviously, the devolved settlement in Northern Ireland is, you know, really falling apart. But when it came to returning uh, power, political power, to the Midlands, to the North, to even bits of London which just aren't in Westminster, it didn't happen. So I think that there needs to be a process of constitutional reform, uh, which you know is dealing with the matter of devolution, um, perhaps even approaching something a bit more like federalism, but also returns power, decision-making power, economic power, to municipalities. It's insane that mayors of urban areas don't have the power to impose rent controls. That's insane. Um, there are these really basic things that need to be done, and yes, you know, it's not the sort of big weighty constitutional stuff of, you know, what happens if you lie to the Queen, blah, 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 blah. But it does, I think, in quite a direct way, address this problem of a lack of agency, a lack of hope and a sense of not being in control of your own life or the area in which you live. Thank you so much for having me. I, I really appreciate it, and your contributions um, as a panel were great. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ashton. We've still got two brilliant speakers here on the panel today. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, would you like to Yeah, I mean, I'm running to be a, a Metro Mayor. It is a... <laughs> <laughs> I believe... <laughs> I would love it to be proper devolution yeah. though, yeah. you know, this feels in part tokenistic, in part a beginnings, I like to look at it as the beginnings of real devolution. I spent a day with Andy Burnham uh, in, in kind of trying to really understand what powers that Metro Mayors do, but one of the things I was most inspired by in spending the day with him is how it felt like politics was very much brought closer to home. He runs Manchester like he's running the country, but people can knock on his door. People, he can meet with groups, he can meet with communities. They have an access to power that they don't when we're talking about Whitehall. You know, Britain is still one of the most centralised countries in Europe. It's, it's shocking 
to me that you know our policies are created here that often don't see you know don't reflect the broad diversity of, of the regions you know the amount of spent on transport is a, in a prime example you know we get so little we literally in, in the Tees Valley have repurposed buses that travel on rail. That's how people are made to get around. We have whole communities and whole villages that can't actually get a bus into their town. They were organising on Facebook to get a lift to the supermarket. That's what, that's what we've got in terms of the current centralised power. And we want to take that power back. We want to be able to determine our bus routes. We want to be able to bring our transport system under public control and public consultation. But also, and I do want to say this, we also have to open up the state, even at a very local level, to the voices of people. One of the things that I'm doing is I'm creating a people's manifesto. Now, that has been created open source with a group of people that are contributing ideas for what a better Teesside would be. But even when I went, if I get selected, uh, I will take that back to the people as part of my campaign. We will run workshops, we will go into communities and ask them their, their opinions. And when I get elected, we will hold citizens' assemblies where people can continue to have their voices heard. So yes, we have to talk about things in terms of constitutional reform, but we have to think about democracy and de democratic reform at a very local level as well. Um, I'll, I'll pick up on the, the Jeremy question, because I hope to everybody in this room, you know, as I said at the beginning, he's, he's the best Labour leader I've had in my lifetime. Um, why don't people like him? It seems, seems a difficult one to me. Uh, but it isn't actually, um, you know, people, it goes back to that being, feeling, you know, disconnected, um, but it goes back to what is out there in terms of where people get their information from, and that is crucial to it. Um, it goes back to the lack of having a unionised workforce, having workplaces where you learn what, what the position was. Uh, if you were reading the sun, you quickly got told not to. You got told what was in there was not true. So what we have to do and what we, I mean, we never let anything go unchallenged. When we go out campaigning, we do say to our, you know, activists, if people say they don't like Jeremy, you don't go, oh, well, don't worry, you're not voting for Jeremy. Not at all. You challenge it, you find out why. And actually, you can get to the root of something quite quickly because people that we speak to, they have, get the same treatment most of the time that Jeremy gets. So when people say, you know, oh, I don't believe, uh, you know, Jeremy, he's, he's weak on defence, he's an IRA sympathiser. It's like, where do you get that? Oh, I've seen it, it's BBC. And you voted Leave. Well, the BBC said you didn't know what you were voting for. You know, which is true. You know, there's always some sort of connection that you can dig out. Um, I do speak to a lot of ex-miners, you know, and they, they, they do read the sun now. And they, you know, it's like, what did the sun say about you during the strike? You were violent thugs and the police were all delicate flowers. You know, that wasn't true then, so why is this true now? I got shouted at in the street once, um, and somebody telling me, I'm not voting for you. Your leader's an IRA sympathiser. He supports Hezbollah and, and you're all Marxists. I thought, well, <laughs> first two, not correct. <laughs> Joking, of course. We have a street in Clay Cross that is called Mark's Court, I kid you not. <laughs> that was named by the Labour Party. <laughs> but you know, we can have to um, find one way or another to say actually, the right wing media is all of our enemy. Mm. And it's saying bad things yeah. about you that isn't true, just like it does about Jeremy. Mm. And we, we have to just keep having that conversation over and over again. It's not, it's not always straightforward. It doesn't always resonate. Um, but, you know, it's never, our voters have got more in common with Jeremy Corbyn than the right-wing yeah. press yeah. Yeah. want them to think that they have. Because it is something I am particularly interested in. North East Derbyshire um, actually forms part of Sheffield City Region. Um, we're not actually, we're, we're a member of the combined authority, but we're not part of the, um, the, the mayor, we're not one of the core 
uh, things. The South Yorkshire is in this position where Rotherham, Barnsley, Sheffield and Doncaster um, have got a mayor who's also an MP. And they haven't got any money done yet from it either. It's a crazy situation, and that's Tory devolution. I'm absolutely thrilled to what Jesse says about taking this back out to the people. Because, you know, we have to look at reform at the very, you know, at local level. Um, we used to have, you know, power in our communities when local governments had money, you know, and that's obviously gone. But I think local government needs reforming. Um, and I think we need to look at Labour Party rules there. I need to think we need to look at, you know, council leaders, members having a say in that. You know, these are things that are, you know, bubbling under the service. Uh, but, you know, taking things back out to the community, listening to them, I think that's absolutely brilliant. And, uh, you know, Tory devolution is no good. You know, we need to do, we've got to have a proper allocation of public expenditure into the right areas. You know, we've got to have... You know, I think the idea of an economy, a local economy with regional investment banks is absolutely brilliant. We've got to get the funding in the right places uh, because it doesn't all come down to money, uh, but certainly the money isn't in the right places at the moment. Thank you. strong message 